Good morning. It's Thursday, September 8th, 2022. I'm Russell, and this is Rocky Road Devotions, a few minutes of help for today's journey. Our devotion today is entitled, Of Grace and Law. In our scriptures, Paul's letter to Timothy, chapter 1, his first letter, where the Apostle Paul writes to his protege, The purpose of my instruction is that all believers would be filled with love that comes from a pure heart, a clear conscience, and genuine faith. But some people have missed this whole point. They've turned away from these things and spend their time in meaningless discussions. They want to be known as teachers of the law, but they don't know what they're talking about, even though they speak so confidently. We know that the law is good when used correctly. For the law was not intended for people who do what is right. It is for people who are lawless and rebellious, who are ungodly and sinful, who consider nothing special and defile what is holy, who kill their father or mother or commit other murders. The law is for people who are sexually immoral, or who practice homosexuality, or are slave traders, liars, promise breakers, or who do anything else that contradicts the wholesome teaching that comes from the glorious good news entrusted to me by our blessed God. The current melee in the United Methodist Church is the division which centers around sexuality and gender identification. Somehow, Paul's counsel to Timothy is not sacred advice to a young minister anymore. Rather, it's become an inconvenient truth dropped from the comfort zone of denominational managers. When it comes to what drives worldly, culture-pandering leadership to twist what Scripture means, even when that means obtusely ignoring what Scripture has presented clearly, It is, sadly, a weaponized form of teaching false doctrine. Paul advised Timothy to steer clear of it at all cost. When dealing with the Pharisees, supposed teachers of the law of God, Jesus tossed aside their pedigrees and prestige in two short sentences, Matthew 23, 24. Blind guides, you strain your water so you won't accidentally swallow a gnat, but you swallow a camel. Swallowing the camel of law and doing it in the name of grace is what's wrong with the current practice of swatting the traditionalist gnats in the sexuality gender identification standoff fueled by a higher commitment to political correctness and denominational survival than fidelity to Scripture. In the name of grace, progressive thought says all humanity is exempt from law. There's nothing to forgive. Yet that kind of thinking lays aside the very substance of grace as being forgiving that which is unforgivable. It says perverted sexual practices are not sin. Therefore, there's nothing to be forgiven, only embraced. It belies the very essence of our vows in confirmation to confess our sinfulness and reject evil in every form. Without accepting the grace of God, admitting our sins and accepting that we deserve death, not a parade, we do not belong to him, let alone get to presume upon his favor. And that camel of false presumption that God winks at sexual perversion is swallowed by unthinking so-called religious leaders every day. For you today... Continue to pray for leaders who are trying their best on both sides of this morass of sexual misunderstanding, especially in the halls of United Methodist leadership. May God's will be served. Mute you on that as you hit the rocky road. Have a blessed day.